Now, one of the most important things is how we're going to be able to discover particles in a specific space drawn as this over here, where we have a particular curve over here, and we are going to target this particular region where there's a high chance of finding our particle here, and we're asked to determine where the position of the particle is with respect to these regions and that region over here. Now, one of the most important thing is that in the beginning point over here is labeled as X, however, at the end of this region here is labeled as D plus DX over there. So, this space region here where the particle is most likely to be gives us the probability of finding our particle in that particular space over there. And it's also expressed as this over there. And here we just have to note that this is just for one dimension. Now the probability of finding our particle at an instant in time somewhere must sum up to become 100. So if you look at it to be a sum of 100 over here, once you include the concept of a 100% or unity, then we know that the wave function must be normalized. And for the function to be normalized, we need to express this in terms of one dimension, which is this. With our complex conjugate multiplied by wave function with respect to dx over 1, and that is for the one dimension over here. And for our three dimension, we have 1 to be equal to our integral of all space applied on our complex conjugate in the x, y, and z including our t and on the other side we have our wave function that acts on the x, y, z or t and don't forget our tau over there now since this is for all space over there now let's look at how we'll be able to start the normalization process over here now for normalization the probability of finding a particle in a region which is dx, in this case, in one dimension, is actually equal to the product of a normalized constant multiplied by a complex conjugate, and also the normalization, normalized constant multiplied by our wave function, all with respect to dx, since we are all involved, or this is applied to a one-dimensional system. Now the sum of the individual probabilities must be equal to 1. So mathematically speaking, what we are trying to say is that once you have your probability over here, which is the square of your wave function, your square of the wave function must be equal to the normalization of your complex conjugate multiplied by the normalization of your wave function and applying your dx over here since it's equal to 1 for the probability where you have 100% chance that your particle is in a particular region then by applying our integral what we get is that this particular part over here which is the n the n is called the constant and once you have the constant the constant can be pulled out of the integral. So what we get here is n squared with the integral and the integral is in all space both at positive infinity and negative infinity and that is applied to our complex conjugate and our wave function in respect to our dx and that is equal to 1. Now solving for our n over here what we get here is that our n squared is equal to 1 over the integral of the complex conjugate and our 
these we press with two eggs over there and then once you solve four and apply the square root to both sides and what we get is the square root of one over the integral the complex conjugate and the wave function with respect to two x or square root over there so the n will be determined in order to normalize our wave function therefore in quantum mechanics the wave function is properly normalized as is written as this particular formula over here that is for our one dimensional case if you are calculating for our n or on the other side if you are writing it in our three dimensional system it is written as this long formula over here which is the sign that negative another earth negative another integral over here and our complex conjugate with our wave function over here and then all are all considered over here with our dx dy dz and dt and take note that all these are equal to one for our three dimensional system over here now this particular segment or coordinates over here are all equal to tau over there and once you're able to solve this for our three dimension then you can be able to apply that for three dimensions while on the other side you can apply this particular one for our one dimensional case over there so all the same guys thanks for following me through this i truly appreciate it if you like it please give a big thumbs up subscribe and share if you understand it and see you all on my next video have a good day peace love you all and bye